Chapter 18 My neighbor Nobun had been in Asashikawa for about ten days. He had been told that Asashikawa was like a smaller version of Sapporo, and certainly the straight streets laid out in a checkerboard pattern gave a pleasant feeling of space. Although it was smaller than Sapporo, the presence of an army division quartered there lent the streets an air of activity and bustle. What gave Nobuo the greatest pleasure was to see the Daisetsu and Tokachi mountain ranges standing clear against the September sky. Snow had already come to them. Those white peaks hinted what life would be like in Asayikawa. He found the sight of them invigorating. The little house he rented was near the station, as it had been in Sapporo. It was a very ordinary one-story house with just three rooms, but in the wide street in front stood a large straight elm tree which took his fancy. In the evening when he prepared his supper, he could hear the voices of children playing under the tree until it grew dark. When he came to Asahikawa, Nobuo decided that he would do his own cooking. He felt that someday, when he married Fujiko, he might have to do the cooking himself. One evening, as he was clearing up after supper, Minakichi Mihori arrived. Ah, hello, welcome. Nobuo was glad to see him. However, Mihori was well under the influence of sake and had a fixed stare. Is it all right to come in? Of course, I'm by myself. Make yourself at home. Mihori stumbled over the threshold as he slipped off his clogs and went into the sitting room. You've drunk quite a lot, haven't you, Mihori? Mihori sat down heavily by the fireplace in the middle of the room and crossed his legs. Whether I'm drunk or not, that's my business. I bought the drink with my own money, not stolen money, Nagano. Nobuo looked blankly at Mihori. Nagano, do you know what sort of sake I've been drinking today? No. I've no idea. You don't know? I wouldn't expect you not to know. Suspicion and resentment seethed in his drink-fuddled mind. Mahori jerked a pair of tongs from the ashes in the fireplace. Nobuo was sitting some distance away. Don't beat about the bush. I was just asking you how I got this sake to drink. You've got me puzzled. I haven't a clue what you are talking about. Nobuo recalled Mihori's expression when he came to meet him at Asahikawa Station. He had looked so happy that Reinosuke Wakura, who had come with him to meet Nobuo, had slapped him on the shoulder and said, You look disgustingly cheerful. Now the same Mihori sat cross-legged before him, hands on knees, tongues in hand, and his shoulders raised threateningly. Well, you've put me in an awkward spot, he said. An awkward spot. Has something happened? Yes, you can be sure of that. It's you, Nagano. What have you come to Asaikawa for? What do you mean, Mihori? Has my coming to Asaikawa put you in a spot? Of course it has. There used to be no one in Asaikawa who knew my past record, only the boss, Wakura, and now you have to come. Nobuo felt he understood Mihori's feelings. Nagano, you've come all the way to Asaikawa to keep a close eye on what I do. Keep an eye on you. What a thing to say. No, that's what you came for, and no mistake. You came to see that I don't steal anybody's pay packet again. You're making a fool of me. Even if you weren't watching me, I wouldn't lay hands on anybody's pay packet again. Those words, you're making a fool of me, struck home to Nobuo. Mahori, don't say such unpleasant things. Unpleasant? Yes, it's unpleasant all right. The things I say and do are unpleasant to you, I don't doubt. I know what you are really thinking. I know, all right. I know what you said to the boss. You said that, in the event of this wretched fellow doing anything bad again, you would leave the railway company with him. Please, please forgive him, you said. You're a very fine person, Nagano. But this is what you are really thinking. You came here to keep an eye on me, so that you would be able to take care of yourself and keep your job. Mihori's speech was becoming thicker and thicker. What are you talking about, Mihori? I came to Asaikawa because my transfer was ordered. If you are ordered to move, you can't do anything about it. Huh, an order to move. As far as that's concerned, if you asked the boss, you could get any number of them. When I was whisked off to Asaikawa, it was at your instigation, I don't doubt. Mihori spoke as if he had forgotten how he'd been reinstated on the point of being dismissed. Mihori, is that all you want to say? Nobuo was thinking how he had left Fujiko in Sapporo and come all the way to Asaikawa. His plans of becoming a true friend to Mihori and really helping him had been overambitious, he reflected gloomily. He did not know how many times he had longed to be with Fujiko. 
The thought that he was more necessary to her than to Mihori troubled him, but he had really wanted to do as the Bible taught. Now, however, the most important thing for him was Fujiko. To leave her, the dearest thing he had, and come to Asaikawa, was being true to Mihori, but his faithfulness was completely lost on him, it seemed. No, I've plenty to say. Mr. Nagano, you've come to Asaikawa to spread bad stories about me. But look here, Mihori. Just now you said it was at my instigation that you were transferred to Asaikawa. I want to be your true friend. There's no reason why I should spread stories about you. You a friend. Don't make me laugh. You're a most dangerous fellow to me, even if you never announce that I stole a colleague's pay packet. Mihori was not listening to Nobuo. Mihori? Nobuo could stand it no longer and became severe. Mihori, stop suspecting such things, and you had better stop drinking. It's disgusting to go drinking and pick quarrels with people. If you'd just stop drinking, you'd be a decent person. Ah, now you've shown your true colors. You're scared that I'll get drunk and make a big mistake and there'll be a row. But, Nagano, I'm going to drink. Yes, I'm going to drink. I've been whisked off to cold Asaikawa. Do you think I can carry on living without drinking? Mihori swayed on his feet. Nagano, I've got one more thing to say. You want to win my gratitude, but I don't want anyone doing me any favors. He sat down on the step in the porch and searched for his shoes. Nobuo gave him a lamp. Mihori thrust his feet into his worn clogs, bumped into the door with a crash so that it jammed, and he had to struggle to open it and went out. Ah, just a minute, I've forgotten something. Perhaps you have designs on Wakura's daughter? No, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Mihori went off laughing loudly, leaving the door about six inches open. It was a fine Sunday in October. Nobuo had heard that there was a church nearby and plucked up courage to go and visit it. In Sapporo he had been to church once or twice, but although there was a friendly spirit among people of the same interests as himself, they gave the impression of being cold towards newcomers. Or was it that Nobuo was not used to the way they did things? The one Nobuo was now directed to, although it was called a church, was really a deserted Buddhist temple, repaired and put to use as both pastor's residence and meeting place. He was surprised to see the fine lattice work in the windows. Looking inside, he saw twenty or thirty children singing a hymn. When they saw Nobuo, their faces lit up, a strange reaction he could not help thinking. At the end, a young man in Japanese dress and short cropped hair, who had been teaching the hymn, came up to Nobuo, followed by his pupils. Are you going to become our teacher now, sir? A lively looking boy asked Nobuo. No, no, I'm not yet, er, it's the first time I've come to this church. That's all right, that makes no difference. Please be our teacher. What is your name, sir? Nobuo introduced himself to the Sunday school teacher, who was about the same age as himself. My name is Nobuo Nagano. I'm a railway employee, and I live about two blocks away. Teacher Nagano, Teacher Nagano. For some reason, the children seemed to have decided on Nobuo as their teacher. Later, in the church records, this was written of him. When he stood to speak, it was with a fierce earnestness, and his pale face became flushed. From his slim, five-foot frame, a message from heaven sounded forth. However, when he came down from the pulpit, he had a kind and mild expression which no one could help but love and admire. Probably the children recognized his kindness at a glance and accepted him. Nobuo must have been the only person, before or since, to be accepted as a Sunday school teacher on his verse first appearance inside a church. And so it was that Nobuo became one of them. He had already decided to be baptized, and the congregation accepted him as a believer like themselves. With his new life in the church, Nobuo found every day very satisfying. At work, however, Minakichi Mahori kept looking at him in a servile, obsequious way that weighed on his mind. At first, Mahori's drunken words had made him angry, and Nobuo had hated him. But, discovering to his shame that he was not capable of living up to the commands of Scripture, he felt humbled and grateful, in a way, for what Mihori had said. Certainly, he had no thought of getting his own back on him. In fact, he had to admit that there had been an element of selfishness in his desire to help Mihori, so now he tried his best to be a true friend. Nobuo's baptism and public confession of faith were to be held at Christmas that year. The evening before the Christmas service, 
Nobuo was sitting by the lamp, totally absorbed in writing out his confession of faith, when Minikichi Mahori called again, and he had been drinking, as he usually did in the evening. What's this? Are you writing a love letter, Nagano? Seeing the ink stone and paper, Mahori gave a mocking laugh. A love letter? I see. Well, you could call it that, laughed Nobuo. As he laughed, the lamp threw a huge shadow of his head on the paper screen. I thought it might be. Who are you writing to? Wakura's daughter, I suppose. Mahori seemed to have Wakura's daughter on his mind a good deal. No, it's not to her. Well then, who is it to? It's to the Lord. And Nobuo used an expression which Mahori took to mean the landlady. Some landlady. Where does she live? You'll get in great trouble with the police if you molest someone like that. That's worse than stealing someone's pay packet. Nobuo said nothing, but laid the confession of faith he had written in front of Mahori. Is it all right to read it? Mahori shrank back a little. Yes, it's all right if you read it out to me. Well, I'll have a look. What you write in a love letter to a landlady will be a fine topic for conversation. He opened the rolled up letter. What's this? Before God and men, I humbly confess my faith. What is it? It's a strange sort of love letter. He was on the point of throwing the letter down, but took it up and continued. Before God and men, I humbly confess my faith. My mother was driven out of the house by my grandmother because she was a Christian. My grandmother was a great hater of Christianity, and I was brought up largely under her influence. When my grandmother died, my mother came to live with my father again, but I found it very hard to feel affectionate toward a Christian mother. I was unable to forgive her for being prepared to desert me, her own child, in obedience to her faith. But because my grandmother and then my father died very suddenly, I began to think about death and then sin. And especially during my adolescent years, I learned from my struggles with physical longings that I was a sinful person. Then by chance, in the winter of the year, I came to Sapporo in the cold streets I listened to the preaching of Teacher Iki, an open-air evangelist. I was greatly moved and wanted to become a Christian. Previously I had reached my own conclusions about Buddhism and no longer felt any resistance to being a Christian. However, Teacher Iki asked me if I admitted that it was my sins that caused Christ to be nailed to the cross, and I did not think that I had committed a great enough sin for that. This was because I prided myself that I was a more earnest person than others. But the teacher immediately told me to take a passage out of the Bible, just one, and see if I could carry it out perfectly. I read the story of the Good Samaritan and thought I could never be as cold-hearted as the men in the story. I flattered myself that I would be like the Good Samaritan, so I decided to become a true neighbor to one of my friends, no matter what it cost. In order to be a good neighbor to him, I came to Asahikawa, where he lived, although I knew I would be the loser in several ways by doing so, and I thought that, seeing I had loved him from the heart and been a good friend to him, naturally he would be glad. But he did not accept my efforts, and I built up a great hatred towards him. I was like the Samaritan, putting all his efforts into helping an injured, half-dead man on a mountain road, and I could not understand why he should shout at me. I was trying to help him, but he roughly pushed off my helping hands. When he did that, I hated and cursed him in my heart. I became more and more filled with hatred toward him, until at last I realized what was happening. I realized that, right from the beginning I had looked down on him. Every day I was unhappy and prayed to God. Then I heard God's voice. You yourself are the wounded traveler, fallen on the mountain road. The fact that you are continually crying out to me for help proves it. I was the sinner who needed help. Then it came to me that it was really Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was the Good Samaritan. This was all so true. In my pride, I had taken the place of God and looked down on my friend. I realized what a great sin it was, not to give God his rightful place. And then I knew that it was my sin that had nailed Christ to the cross. Now I believe in Christ's atonement on the cross for my sin. I believe in his resurrection and in the eternal life that he has promised. When I think about Christ who was crucified for us, I want to offer my life to God and very genuinely to become his disciple. Here I humbly close my confession of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Minekichi Mihori, 
who had read avidly to the end, rolled up the paper in silence. Amen. Is that what you say? As he spoke, he put down the document heavily in front of Nobuo, but he showed no sign of moving from his place beside the stove. Nobuo prayed that in some way his friend might come to know that God really loved him. Mihori, it was very impertinent of me. I was conceited and thought that somehow or other I could elevate and change your character. When you first came to this house and angrily told me not to make a fool of you, I had no intention of doing so. But I see now that I was really looking down on you. Please forgive me. Nobuo bowed his head low. The only sound to be heard was the stove burning. Mihori sat without moving. Two months had elapsed since Nobuo's baptism. It was a warm evening, for March was drawing near and the drips from the roof could be heard even at night. Nobuo sat warming himself by the stove, reading a manual of railway regulations. The front door slid open noisily. He went out to see, thinking that Mihori had called again, but, to his surprise, it was the large form of Reinosuke Wakura filling his small porch. This is a snug little house, said Wakura, wheeling round and looking at the living room, as in his Sapporo lodgings devoid of any furniture except for a desk. Nagano, I've got a problem, he went on, taking a great gulp of the tea which Nobuo had set before him. I see. Nobuo had a premonition that this sudden visit from Wakura was to talk about something difficult. The lamp is bright, isn't it? You're a methodical person. You take good care of things. Wakura characteristically changed the subject. As a matter of fact, it's about Misa. He looked searchingly at Nobuo's face. Nobuo frowned, thinking that this matter of Misa had been settled long ago. Don't worry, I'm not asking you to consider her again, Wakura laughed, seeing Nobuo's dismay. To be frank with you, Misa's husband has been decided. Well, well, congratulations. Nobuo remembered Misa's plump form. For a moment he had a feeling as if he had lost something. No, it's not a matter for congratulations. Her partner is Mihori. For a moment, Nobuo could not reply. You're surprised? Yes, I am, Nobuo replied frankly. Young lovers, there's no stopping them. I just didn't realize it. As a matter of fact, Mihori stayed with us for a month after he came to Asaikawa from Sapporo. Nobuo had heard about this. He had heard that for some reason, maybe his mother's neuralgia, Mihori had come to take up his appointment alone but he had thought that Mihori had stayed at the Wakura's home only a few days. He stayed a month, did he? I'm just a silly, doting father. I thought Misa had more sense than most girls. I never thought she'd fall in love with a fellow like Mihori. Wakura had never told his wife or Misa what Mihori had done in Sapporo. They knew that he had come to the house early one morning with Nobuo to apologize, but they had no reason to know why. They simply knew it was enough to make Wakura angry. A girl like Misa, she's not like Mihori's mother, always hovering half-hidden in the background. Seeing Mihori acting so deferentially and yet so depressed in my house, she felt sorry for him, it seems. She was kinder to him than she need have been. Whether Mihori misunderstood this and interpreted it as love, and whether Misa was glad to be misunderstood, I don't know exactly. I see. That's what happened. When you think of it, if two young people like them live together under the same roof for a month, there's nothing strange about their coming to feel deeply for one another. Thinking about it now, it was just my carelessness that I did not notice it. After that, they used to meet now and again secretly. Anyway, it seems she's going to have a baby. Even Wakura, usually so large-hearted and stable, appeared shaken. Nobuo felt there was nothing he could do but listen in silence. He could not very well say that it was a terrible thing to happen, nor could he repeat his congratulations. But, knowing the situation now, he knew why Mihori wanted to pick a quarrel with him when he was drunk. Just the fact that Wakura was well disposed toward Nobuo could make Mihori think that Misa might be taken away from him. Mr. Wakura, don't you think Mihori will settle down when he gets married? He's not a bad person at heart. Nobuo really believed this. He did not think Mihori would get into trouble again. He thought that when the child was born, he would become a kindly, devoted father. Hmm, maybe that's true. He's a timid man. He would not be able to do anything really bad, said Wakura, striking his knees lightly with his hands. But you know, Nagano, I really wanted someone like you for Misa. There's too much of a difference between you and Mihori. Wakura laughed regretfully. 
Nobuo raised his head and spoke. Mr. Wakura, that's not true. In church I've learned that all men are the same. Don't think of someone like me as anything special. In the eyes of God, Mihori may be a better person than me, he said eagerly. Undoubtedly, Mihori had been quarrelsome because he considered himself inferior to Nobuo. And Nobuo was ashamed that he had unconsciously come to think of himself as superior to Mihori. Wakura looked at Nobuo, a little surprised, and then, waving his big hands, he said, Not at all. You and Mihori, you're as different as the moon and a snapping turtle. No, that's not true. It says in the Bible, There is no one righteous, no, not one. It's stated clearly. No. Whatever the Bible may say, what I see with my eyes is true, and not only me. No matter who looks at you, a fine person is a fine person, and a fool is a fool. Wakura cracked a salted biscuit with a loud snap. You don't understand. Well, listen to me. You're saying that Mihori and I are the same. Don't joke with me. I think I'm a little bit cleverer than Mihori. Wakura munched his biscuit loudly. Mr. Wakura, won't you please read the Bible once? With our human judgment, we see one as a fine man and another as a fool. But if we had to stand before God, it would be a different matter. Would we be able to stand up straight before God and claim to be great men? Nobuo was deeply in earnest. Well, if it's a question of an affair with a woman, I've had about five. In this Meiji age, most men play around with women, and it doesn't particularly matter. I've not stolen anybody's things, and of course I've not killed anyone. I would not have so much to be ashamed of before the devil or God. Wakura laughed loudly, then he talked a little about their work and left. As he was pulling on his long boots, Wakura said, Nagano, I know he's a good-for-nothing fool, but will you look after me, Hori? Ah, I've got it. That talk you just gave me about Yaso, let him hear it too. I don't need that sort of talk so much. Wakura put out his big hand and grasped Nobuo's lightly. In July, the month after Misa and Mahori were married, they had a pretty little girl. Mahori stopped his heavy drinking and became a diligent worker. They were a happy couple, and the times when he took even a little sock became few. Nobuo had intended to visit Fujiko once a week, but his plans came to nothing. Because he was a Sunday school teacher, he was hardly ever able to return to Sapporo. If anything, it was Yoshikawa who took to calling sometimes on Nobuo in Asaikawa. One day, Nobuo was telling his pupils a story about Jesus, when unexpectedly, Yoshikawa came shambling into the church. Nobuo gave him a glance of recognition and was about to go on with the lesson. However, another man came in behind Yoshikawa. Ah! Cousin Takashi! Nobuo called out in a loud voice without thinking, and as one, the thirty or forty pupils turned round to look. Nobuo resumed his lesson in a fluster, and the pupils were soon drawn again to his story. Jesus was walking on the waves, gently stretching out his hands to the disciples as he walked towards them. The children all nodded approval. Nobuo's storytelling had an unconscious earnestness which absorbed the children's attention. They were intent, almost as if gazing at Jesus walking over the dark waves. When Sunday school ended, the pupils all rushed around Nobuo, and when he had touched them or laid his hand on their shoulders, they went home looking very satisfied. The lad's really grown up, hasn't he? Takashi's voice was as loud as usual. Cousin Takashi, it's very good of you to come as far as here. Yoshikawa, how did you meet him? Your mother in Tokyo told him to call on me, and she sent a present. I see, and then you went out of your way to show him how to find me. You shouldn't have gone to so much trouble. Seeing that they had come right to the church, Nobuo urged them to stay for the adults' worship service. Remarkable, isn't it, being made to listen to a talk we don't understand, said Takashi on the way home. But in spite of that, he seemed cheerful. Well, I've something good to tell your mother. When she hears that I specially came all the way to Asahikawa and went to hear some Yaso preaching, she'll be moved to tears of joy. And on top of that, I don't know how glad she will be to hear that her dear lad has been teaching Yaso stories with an earnest face. Nobuo and Yoshikawa laughed together. The August sun was hot in Asahikawa. The three walked the two blocks to Nobuo's house, and as they ate the noodles they had ordered to be delivered, on the way back, Nobuo listened to Takashi's news. In his colorful manner, Takashi told him how Machiko's child was growing up and running around the garden, how her husband Kishimoto took great care of his mother Kiku, 
and how Kiku would like to see him. Nobuo had a sudden longing to join Takashi and return to Tokyo. Takashi, I'm beginning to want to go back and see everyone. Takashi smiled. Well, if you want to, there's no one to stop you. My boy, two years in Hokkaido is enough. It's time for you to be pulling out. Pack your things and come along with me. You can call it work if you like, but I had the idea of taking you back to Tokyo, so I made the excuse of coming to see whether Sapporo would be a good place for business. Nobuo looked at Yoshikawa, who interposed no words of his own but listened, smiling to the conversation of the other two. Cousin Takashi, thank you for coming up specially, but I plan to be in Hokkaido for a little longer. Nobuo spoke with decision. He had written about Fujiko in detail when he had announced his baptism, and his mother had written several times to say that she was praying for them both. Nobuo felt a little uneasy, wondering why Takashi had not been told about this. You may say that, but, Nobuo, you're the eldest son. For the eldest son in the family to reach 24 or 25 and not get married and not look after his parents, is that the way to go about things? Well, just wait another four or five years, said Nobuo quietly. So, if you think anywhere in the wilds is all right and intend to stay for another four or five years, if that's what you want, that's all right, but I'll bring you a nice bride from Tokyo. For a second time, Nobuo looked at Yoshikawa. He was eating a white bean paste bun, holding it in his stubby fingers, and appeared not to be listening. Cousin Takashi, I've decided who I want to marry. Nobuo sat up formally. Woo, it's hot. Asaikawa's a strange place. Look here. At New Year, it was 41 below zero or something shockingly cold, they say. Even in summer, I was scared about how cold it would be when I came. But today, it's hardly any different from Tokyo. With his handkerchief, Takashi wiped away the sweat running down his thick neck. Cousin Takashi, I've decided on someone to marry. Nobuo was determined not to let the conversation drift away from the subject. Huh. I know, I know, the sister of Mr. Yoshikawa here. But look here, I met her in Sapporo and she's got lung TB, and on top of that, spinal TB. It's sad, but she won't recover. Mr. Yoshikawa isn't a person not to understand such things. Surely you are not intending to wait for a woman who will never get better? Don't speak so wildly. It's you who's being reckless, saying you want to make this bedridden, invalid your wife. That's wild talk, if anything is. Just to look at her, she's thin and so fragile, she might go any time. Cousin Takashi, Fujiko is certain to get better. I'm sure she is going to become strong. Huh, the god of Yaso must really answer your prayers. Christianity is not a religion for personal advantage, but she will surely recover, and she doesn't have to get better. If she never recovers, I'll just not marry. You fool, that's no way to talk, said Takashi without restraint. Yes, I'm a fool. Truly, I want to be a fool for Christ. That may be so, but you are the eldest son of the Nagano family. You have a duty to leave some heirs. Is my family such an important thing? Of course. Good family and continuous lineage are more important than anything in this world. Don't you understand that? Since you came to Hokkaido, you have become a little strange in the head. Forty-one below zero must have frozen into the middle of your brain. Yoshikawa had been listening quietly but now he spoke deliberately. Nagano, this is a good opportunity to tell you something as Fujiko's brother. I'm very grateful to you for your feelings towards her. But as your friend, I can't just leave it at that. I feel sorry for Fujiko, yes. But I want you to be really happy. Don't suggest anything so despicable. It upsets me, said Nobuo sharply. That's not despicable at all. Men have only one life to live, you know. I don't think you should spend your youthful years waiting for someone like Fujiko. I would like you to think this over again, thoroughly. Yoshikawa, my life is more important to me than it is to anybody else. This is the way I have chosen because I think it is best. Thank you for your kind words of warning, but I'm going to wait until Fujiko gets better. But when Yoshikawa started to speak, Takashi silenced him with a big wave of his hand. Yoshikawa, it's no good talking. This fellow's mother left even her child and her home for the sake of Yaso. He inherits his mother's stubbornness. Mere words will not do any good. After this, Takashi looked long and fixedly at Nobuo's face. Well, Mr. Yoshikawa, let's leave it at that. He's a remarkable person. Takashi fanned himself calmly with a big fan, 
but his eyes were moist. Five years passed after this incident. During that time, Nobuo became the Sunday school principal of the young Asaikawa church and was hardly ever absent from service. At work, he won the greatest trust from his superiors and juniors. Already he had been promoted general manager of the Asaikawa transport office. But apart from this, requests for him to give Bible expositions came from railway employees, not only in Asaikawa but Sapporo and places at a distance. Using holidays and business trips, Nobuo did his best to make time for Bible study with those who wanted it. Young men who went through the Russo-Japanese War in the 37th and 38th years of Meiji, as well as those who applauded the victory, had been made to think seriously about life and death. Some of them had returned from the war, and some had lost friends and brothers. Mihori was one who survived. He became a regular attender at the Asaikawa Bible study, but for some reason or other, he always had a scornful, mocking expression on his face. Increasingly, many people in different places became attached to Nobuo, and there were those who said that though the Bible was hard to understand, if they could only see his face, they would come to the meeting, for it seemed to glow with light. It became the custom, if his superiors had an intractable employee, for them to get him transferred to Nobuo. Nobuo Nagano was becoming indispensable to both the railway authorities and the Sixth Avenue Church in Asaikawa. Whenever he had business in Sapporo, Nobuo went straight to Fujiko's bedside. But as the five years progressed, Fujiko's health improved surprisingly. It was hard to imagine her as having been a bedridden invalid. Her color was good and she could get about the house without trouble. Yoshikawa had married meanwhile and had brought his wife to join them in the family home. In another year, Nobuo thought happily he might be able to marry Fujiko and take her to Asaikawa.